Well, you see, I am of the belief that this conflict, uh, where you can say Russia is responsible for the war, but NATO is responsible for the underlying conflict, uh, has little to do with Ukraine as such. But for the Western world or for the NATO countries, it's about using Ukraine to, if you will, defeat or weaken or whatever, uh, which uh, Defense Secretary Austin has said uh, quite some time ago, we can uh, Russia once and for all so that the Western alliance can expand and spend its, uh, its resources and energies on China and, the, if you will, the Far East in general. And so arming Ukraine, which is not a NATO country, instead of seeking a peaceful solution, bringing in the United Nations, bringing in the OSCE, coming up with creative ideas about what Ukraine could get, a much better solution would be some kind of Switzerland status, you know, guaranteed by all sides and things like that. Uh, the only thing you can do nowadays in the West is military, military, and more military. It's the same when you have a civilian problem in the Western world today. What they do is they pump in uh, money, set off resources, billions of dollars for the, the package, but there's no reform, there's no change in the system. So you're, you're, you're pushing in weapons in a defunct military alliance, militarist thinking alliance, and you're, you're pushing in pouring in money into an infrastructure, for instance, in the West, that is not up to date and is not of the future. So, you know, this whole thing, to summarize what I've been saying, is basically a, a, a social, socioeconomic political system that lacks the ability to reinvent itself, to develop, to do new reforms, to do big projects and have positive visions. The West has no positive vision. It used to have, doesn't have today. Well, the, I, I have always been with few exceptions against the uh, idea of sanctions, particularly when sanctions or blockades, whatever you call them, are not very specific seeking to achieve a particular political goal and therefore time limited. The sanctions that have been put up against Russia are time unlimited and they are across the board. I mean, I don't believe for a second that let's imagine Russia would withdraw from Ukraine tomorrow. These sanctions will not be lifted. It's the same with Iran, it's the same with Cuba. The, 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 the obsession with this mass destructive politically and sometimes even in terms of human lives, mass destructive weapon called economic sanctions is a, is a, is a, is a favorite of the United States and, and the European Union. If you look at all the sanctions in the whole world, they are basically a Western phenomenon. America has thousands of them in treasury. And they have had it for years against, or decades against some country. So this idea in an interdependent world that we want to cancel, to cut off, to never see Russia again in the marketplace or the political meeting places or in, in, in peace talks is to me uh, an indication, an indicator that you are not living in the reality and the real world that the rest of us are living in. We need each other. There's no way we can create a better world without Russia or Russia isolate. And of course, I mean, what we are actually doing in the West is to isolate the West. Because Iran and all those countries we harass, China and Russia, I'm not defending what Russia has done in Ukraine, but what I'm saying is the response to that is out of proportion, irrational, emotionalist, and not conducive to cooperation even in the long-term future. These countries will turn away from the West. And I would regret it with thinking of Russian culture, Russia being in a European state, uh, President Putin has argued time and again that we see each other as a European state and we even want to be members of NATO. And where are we today? The peacemaking alliance NATO is, is simply saying you don't exist anymore in our world. This is not real realpolitik. And it's funny to hear and to notice that one of the best speakers on this whole issue of apart from a lot of intellectuals such as Mearsheimer, such as former uh, US ambassadors to Russia, etc., is 99-year-old Henry Kissinger, whom I never thought I would 
agree with, but here I sit and I agree with Henry Kissinger because he knows what real politics is. Well, it, it, I think I would have two quick answers to this. First of all, NATO has always been a US-led uh, alliance since 49. Um, it's for the Euro-Atlantic space, as you know, and one reason we have NATO is that the United States want, if there is a war, to keep it to Europe and not have it on its own territory. Uh, and there is a tremendous, of course, also created by this panic and psychology reaction to the, the uh, military operation in Ukraine, that we must stand as one. There's no space for discussion with it. I mean, I look at Sweden and Denmark, you know, Sweden and Finland has just become a sort of membership. Denmark is totally, without a foreign policy, doesn't think independently anymore. I know it because I'm a Danish citizen and follow it. Uh, secondly, the sad thing is that the European Union could have become, it cannot anymore, could have become, if you will, the alternative West for the world to speak with. If the Un European Union had been able to get together its acts, create a new way of thinking security, such as common security, as Gorbachev suggested in 30 years ago, common security in Europe, we cannot be sure uh, and feel safe and secured unless Russia feels secure with us and vice versa. That whole brilliant intelligent policy that Olaf Palmer once upon a time suggested in his report in the 80s, common security, human security, global security, civilian security before military, because according to the UN Charter, the military shall be the last resort and not the first. Now, mind you, when you, when you asked me the question, if you look at it, I think the news today was that Madame von der Leyen, uh, the head, if you will, of the European Union, tells the world that we are now planning to set up a mechanism by which we can take the resources or reserves of Russia in Western banks and put them to uh, rebuild Ukraine, which by the way, we are destroying also with our weapons. I mean, this is theft. And so uh, if you cannot come up, if the Europeans cannot come up with some kind of alternative, 410 million people coming up with an alternative to American dominance, then, then it will be dominated. But I'm not saying European Union is innocent in these sanctions. The U European Union, the Commission and the foreign policy leadership and all of that have been on exactly the same line as the, the Washington. The difference being that we're going to pay the economic price for these sanctions, uh, you know, the petrol prices and all that, uh, you know, all the things we can't do and we won't be able to do the next few years of decades in Europe because of these economic manipulations and cutting ourselves off from the world economy. So this is ter ter terrible, but um, yes, there's a dominance from Washington, but you're only dominated if you accept to be dominated. Europe has enough resources 